So this is part four of the tutorial in which we will generate a Gaussian input for uh, water molecular orbitals. We will run a population analysis, analyze the output, and finally visualize the molecular orbitals using Avogadro. So let's get back to our water molecule from the previous part and let's now generate the input for Gaussian. Right here uh, I will change the title to water MO. Change the calculation to geometry optimization keep theory basis set the same and everything else is fine too and click on generate save the file as water mo .com and open the Gaussian So this is my existing uh, file job edit, uh, and here we have to do several changes in order to actually be able to do the calculation properly and to visualize the output. The first thing you have to do is uh, make changes in the root section right here. So after the closing bracket of D, you have to type a space and type in P O P equal R and G space form check and space. I'm going to erase the opt because my geometry optimization was already done. But if you're not sure, you can do that in there too. It's fine. Alright, so what are these changes and what do they do? The first a command that I'm going to give to Gaussian is the first type of calculation, which is a population analysis. Um, it comes with an option that you have to select. It's either minimum, regular, or full. So minimum is simply the homo in lumo. Regular is homo minus 5 to lumo plus 5 and full is all the one, the possible ones. So all the molecular orbitals you can possibly get. Next, you have a space and then you have the keyword form check. Form check creates a new file uh, which will contain the information for the molecular orbitals visualization that we will be using to actually see the emuls in Avogadro. It's very important that you put it there because you cannot use the dot out file to see the, mo the molecular orbitals. Finally, the OPT is the geometry optimization that you can put, of, well, but don't really have to because um, population analysis automatically performs an optimization. Title section and everything else is the same. I'm not going to change anything and I'm going to click on run. Save my output file as water mo.out out and the process is running. As soon as processing is complete, I can once again read the wonderful quote. quote. And now let's analyze the output. I'm going to open it in Notepad once again, skip the copyright, and get to the actual population analysis. So once again, you can see the energy um, in atomic units, which are heart trees. In the part three, I think I called it heart tree fuck, which is wrong. So it's heart trees. Um, and it's the same, so good news, we're doing the right calculation. Then comes the population analysis, and this is it. You get the number of the orbital right here. 
then you get an O or a V telling you if it's occupied or virtual. So these are O's, these are V's. Fine. Then you get the eigenvalues, so the energy of that particular molecular orbital. And under the um, eigenvalue in each column, you get the distribution of energy for each orbital, for each uh, atom. So you can see which ones are participating. If you're interested in the homo lumo gap, uh, you will need to look at these uh, energies right here. So the last O and the first V will give you the energies of the homo and the lumo. If you want to have the gap, you'll have to take the difference of these energies. Usually, uh, these the LUMO eigenvalue will be positive and the HOMO eigenvalue will be negative. If your HOMO is positive, then there is probably a problem with your molecule and most probably it's not stable. Uh, so on the top here I forgot to mention that you're also given the different symmetries of the MOs, you have the occupied and the virtual ones, and there you go. And if you go down, you get a density matrix, and you get a full Millikan population analysis. So remember, if you did the SP calculation, it was a shrinked one, but here is the whole layout. And finally, you have the orbital energies and kinetic energies here in short. So if you want to have like a shortcut and don't want to look through all of the columns on top there, you can just look here. And that's the end of your output. So now, if you actually just wanted to see what they look like, we have to go back to Avogadro. And here is a little trick that you have to do. If we simply open the .out file, you will see the water molecule, but you do not have enough information to see the molecular orbitals. So this is not what you should be working with. You should be opening um, the Gaussian GO9W um, directory and look for a folder named scratch. It's right here. Open it and in this folder you will see a file called test.fchk. So this is the form check file that contains information for the molecular orbitals. And we're going to open this test.fchk file in Avogadro. So it looks exactly the same, because your molecule is the same, but it also contains additional information. To see the molecular orbitals, you have to go into Extension, Create Surfaces, and you have a new window open. Here you have to go into Surface Type and select Molecular Orbital, and you'll see the different um, MOs that you can select from. So be careful that you actually select what you calculated for. So if you did a calculation for electrostatic potential, but you actually selected electron density and click on calculate, you will freeze. Because I did not do, do all these calculations, I can only select molecular orbital and then click on calculate. So let's see what the HOMO looks like. And there you go. Um, if I want to see, let's say, the LUMO, I select it here, I click on Calculate, and I'm going to see the HOMO, uh, the LUMO, sorry. And there's a nice little hole in there, looks like a donut. You can see a lower molecular orbital, let's say MO3. And there you go, you can freeze sometimes. So I'm going to close the program and restart it again.
So yeah, unfortunately, if you click too fast, you can freeze. Can create surfaces. Molecular orbital, MO3, and calculate. So, there you go. Close and close. So yes, I want to save changes. So that's it. This is the end of part four. In the next part of this tutorial, you will see how to uh, calculate the vibrational frequencies of a molecule and how to create a spectra and see the different vibrations as a little video clip.